Well, good morning, Crossview family. Welcome to Church Online this morning. We're so excited to be able to gather in this way. You know, another way that we are excited to be gathering together is through our drive-in service. If you would like to uh, be part of our drive-in service, that's wonderful. Uh, it's been, last week was our first week doing that. We had such a great time together. If you would like to come to our drive-in service, the best way to do that is to get on our website and register for a spot. We have a limited number of spots, uh, so the best thing to do is to reserve your spot. And also, if you go online and reserve your spot, you'll, you'll get all the information you need about what our drive-in service looks like and how to participate. We also want to make clear, um, if there's enough space each week, we will be able to get out of our cars and visit, uh, socially distance, wearing masks, and following all of those, um, those regulations that we're following. But it's a great way to see some people face-to-face -face a little bit. Uh, that was a really, cool, a really incredible thing that we were able to do uh, this last week and, and we'll be able to do again this week. So we just want to encourage you to uh, join in that way if you'd like. I'd like to read a psalm for us today just to kind of get our hearts and minds ready for worship and hearing from the word today. And I'd like to read from Psalm 93, a really short but really incredible psalm. And it says this, The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. Indeed, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Your throne, O Lord, has stood from time immemorial. You yourself are from the everlasting past. The floods have risen up, O Lord. The floods have roared like thunder. The floods have lifted their pounding waves. But mightier than the violent raging of the seas, mightier than the breakers on the shore, the Lord above is mightier than these. Your royal laws cannot be changed. Your reign, O Lord, is holy forever and ever. What an incredible encouragement for us. The Lord is king. Let's worship together. Good morning, church. My name's Wendy. If we haven't met, I'm part of the worship team, and I wanted to welcome you to service this morning. Um, this week, our songs all speak to God's sufficiency, that he is enough for all of our needs, that he is the only sure footing through all the changes of life and that he's the only one who can truly satisfy our souls. And it felt like a really timely reminder because right now so much is changing. There's a lot of upheaval and many of us are dealing with some kind of loss, whether that is actually mourning the loss of a loved one, whether it is the loss of uh, activities, routines, gatherings that gave us meaning, and pleasure and sense of worth, whether it is the loss of a job and worries about the future and, you know, what's going to happen. It's good to be reminded in all of those things that God is steadfast, that he does not change. His love for us does not change and that our value is not found in all of those changing activities, circumstances, abilities, but our value is fixed because of Jesus and what he did for us. So we can still worship and praise God through all of our circumstances because of who Jesus is and what he's done, that he is our treasure, that he is the source of wholeness and life for our souls. So let's worship.
everyone. Welcome to Crossview. I'm so glad you could be here with us this morning. You know, I have loved diving into the Psalms together this summer. I just continue to be amazed at how timeless they are and how they continue to speak to the realities that we face today. And this should come as no surprise, right? Because, because the Psalms are uh, prayerful songs to and about God who never changes. And I'm so grateful for the words of the Psalms that give us a, a language of prayer that's just as meaningful today as it was thousands of years ago when the Psalms were written. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 100th Psalm, which is a call to bold and active praise. The 100th Psalm acts as a, a capstone to a, a series of Psalms that comes just before it. And the collective message of that series is this. The Lord reigns even when everything says otherwise. With that truth in mind, listen to this call to praise. In Psalm 100, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Well, as Pastor Kyle told us earlier this summer, the, the Psalms are divided into five books and we find Psalm 100 in the fourth of those books. Many of the Psalms here in this fourth book address uh, worship in the life of the Jewish people after they had spent 70 years in exile. In the Babylonian exile, the Jewish people uh, had lost everything that they as a community held dear. The land, including the holy city of Jerusalem, the temple, which held the dwelling place of God, and the ruling kingship, the royal line descended from King David. 
All of these things were key in their understanding of their covenant relationship with God and their role as his chosen people. And all of these things had promises from God attached to them. So when the Jewish people lost their land, their temple, their royal line, on top of the personal tragedies of losing their homes, of being deported to a different nation, of sometimes being separated from their families, you can imagine that the, the effect was devastating. And this exile lasted for an entire generation, for 70 years. It would have been easy to believe that God had broken his covenant with his people. It would have been easy to believe that God either didn't care to save them or wasn't able to save them. Book four of the Psalms begins uh, with Psalm 90, a Psalm that was attributed to Moses. And about a thousand years or almost a thousand years before the Babylonian exile, Moses led the people of Israel through another generation long exile, a time of, of instability when the home that God had promised them was still out of reach. They lived as wanderers in the desert for 40 years, waiting for God's promise of their own land to be fulfilled. And in those years, it happened multiple times that the Israelites gave in to the fear that God either didn't care to save them or wasn't able to save them. And in various ways, they tried to take matters into their own hands. They lost sight of the truth that the Lord reigns even when everything says otherwise. But their inability to see that truth didn't make it any less true. The Lord continued to reign and he continued to prove himself faithful to his people and to the promises he had made to them. So it's no accident then that this fourth book in the Psalms begins with this ancient Psalm of Moses. It's a meaningful lead into a, a collection of songs for the Jewish people who are trying to rebuild their lives and their culture after 70 years of exile. Starting with Moses was, was a way to point the people back to their own history, to remind them that they had been in similar circumstances before and that God would be faithful to them now, just as he had been faithful to them then. Moses' psalm begins like this, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. What a powerful statement. This reminds God's people that even when they were homeless as a people, even when they were wandering in the desert, waiting to enter the land that God had promised them, and even when they were captives, exiles, uh, captive exiles in Babylon, torn from their homeland, God was their home. God was their dwelling place. Not only had he never abandoned them, but he himself was their shelter. This speaks powerfully to God's loving care for his people. And then Moses' psalm goes on to include proclamations of God's power and sovereignty and faithfulness, even while it also includes lament over life's sorrows and troubles. It's a throwback to Exodus, and it acts as an introduction to a series of psalms that unequivocally proclaim that the Lord reigns even when everything else says otherwise. Over and over again in these psalms, especially in uh, Psalms 93 through 99, we hear the theme and the words, the Lord reigns. This is an anthem for God's people as they return to their homeland, as they begin the work of, of rebuilding their homes and their city and their temple, which had been the religious center of their culture for, for centuries. The Lord reigns was a reminder that the, their time in Babylon had not been an abandonment, that God had not forgotten them, and that God had not been defeated. It was a reminder that even those years in exile were within the realm of God's sovereignty. The Lord reigns even when everything says otherwise. How desperately we need to be reminded of this right now. In our world, this world that God created and declared to be good, it's easy to look around and think that everything is falling apart. It's easy to believe that chaos is taking over and that we've strayed too far to have any hope of getting back to the world that God himself said was good. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking 
that God either doesn't care to save us or isn't able to save us. But these Psalms reorient us to the truth. And the truth is that the Lord reigns. Psalm 100 is the sequel to the Psalms that tell us that the Lord reigns. It doesn't explicitly use that phrase, but it does give us instruction on how to respond to it. It's a call to exuberant worship. It's, it's a doxology, really, which literally means an expression of glory. It may have been used uh, as an entry song as people brought their thank offerings to the temple, in which case it served to invite them into a time of joyful and grateful worship. And it serves the same purpose today. Listen again to these words. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. This is significant. Here and in many of the Psalms that come just before this one, uh, this reference to the whole earth is made over and over again. They say things like, sing to the Lord, all the earth. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations, glory and strength. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns, let the earth be glad. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. And then finally here in Psalm 100 again, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. All of these phrases are included in the Psalms coming just before Psalm 100. These Psalms are calling the whole earth, every person, to not only recognize the sovereignty of the Lord, but also to enter into worship and to experience for themselves his love and his goodness. This was not an easy concept among the Jewish people. There was this clear understanding uh, in the culture that they were God's chosen people, that, that they were set apart and preserved for him, bound together with him through an exclusive covenant. And so this idea of opening their practice of worship to the whole earth and sharing their covenant relationship, their exclusive access to God with everyone else was radical. And it's exactly what the Psalms are calling for. Then after this, this radical whole earth call to praise, we come to verse 3, which is the core of Psalm 100. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. This is a declaration of who God is and of who we are. It is a worshipful, grateful proclamation of identity. First, it tells us who God is. The Lord is God. In Hebrew, Yahweh is Elohim. Yahweh, the Lord, the I am, who leads us and saves us and calls us his own, is Elohim, is God, is the one who holds all power and all wisdom and who spoke the universe into existence. In the ancient Near East, idol worship was rampant and the nations worshiped many false gods. The statement that the Lord is God is saying that the God of Israel is more than just the deity of their choice. He's more than just a God among many gods. He is the God, the one who reigns above all others. And as such, his love extends not only to Israel, but to all the earth. And the whole earth is called to recognize him and to worship him. Yahweh is Elohim. The Lord is God. So the Psalms, if this Psalm tells us who God is, and then it tells us who we are. We are his. This is our identity. This is who we are. This is joyful and exciting, and we are shouting this proclamation for everyone to hear. We want everyone to know that we are his. We tell others uh, about who we are in all sorts of ways all the time, don't we? Maybe you have a 
a 26.2 sticker on your car, which tells us that you are a serious runner. Maybe you have a Norwegian sweater, which tells us about your family heritage. Lots of us around here wear uh, Seahawks jerseys, which, which identify us as Seahawks fans. I still wear a Hauschka jersey, which probably identifies me as a, a Seahawks fan living in the past. If you wear a, a wedding ring, uh, that identifies you uh, as married. These are proclamations of pieces of our identity. But Psalm 100 is, uh, is bigger than that. It gives a much bigger, a much more complete picture of who we are. We are gods. No matter what other identities we hold, our family, our job, our activities, this one is bigger. We belong to God. We are his. It's not just an, uh, an individual identity either. It's a collective one. We're coming together and we are saying we are his. Identity is always established best within community. We are designed for connection with God and for connection with one another. And so finding our connection in God is not just saying I am his, but we are his. And we are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. The psalm then repeats a call to joyful praise here in verse four. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. I love that this call to praise is so active and alive. This is not a passive or internal or individualistic idea of worship, but it is a bold call to vibrant and exuberant and loud and communal worship. In the five verses of this psalm, there are seven calls to active worship. Shout for joy, worship with gladness, come before him with joyful songs, know that the Lord is God, enter his gates with thanksgiving, give thanks and praise his name. One of the best ways to consistently remind ourselves and those around us that the Lord reigns even when everything says otherwise is to maintain a posture of worship. When we are actively worshiping God, we are constantly reminded of his faithfulness and his goodness. We live with a heart of thanksgiving, which trains us to see beauty even in the midst of ashes. We gain clarity as we learn to recognize his redemptive work throughout the world. And when we live in a posture of worship, we are better able to comfort and serve and encourage those around us because then our faith is not just a, a catechism that we recite, but it is an active, living, breathing, joyful relationship with God. Psalm 100 ends with a verse of stunning truth that really ties the entire series of Psalm 90 through 100 together. It says this, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the fundamental nature of God and is the basis of our understanding of him. Remember how this series of Psalms began with the Psalm from Moses. The series opens by saying, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. And then it closes by saying, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Do you see the bookends of these Psalms? God's goodness and love and faithfulness are eternal and constant. That was true when Moses was leading the Israelites through the desert for 40 years before they entered the land that was promised to them. It was true when the Jewish people were exiled in Babylon for 70 years before returning to their homeland and rebuilding. And it's true for us today. It's true in the middle of a pandemic and economic crisis and political turmoil. The Lord reigns even when everything says otherwise. And we can acknowledge the brokenness in our world and in our own lives and actively pursue justice and mercy while still living in the truth that the Lord, our good and loving and faithful God, reigns. 
In fact, that's the only way to pursue justice and mercy for a lifetime. If we embrace the truth of who God is and of who we are in him, if we live in a posture of worship and active praise, then we will have the clarity and the strength to sustain us as we do the work that God has called us to do. Our first job is to worship. Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful uh, for this gift of the Psalms that provide us with not only a language to speak to you, but also such, uh, such meaningful uh, examples of how to live our life in a posture of worship. We're grateful, Lord, for the, the faithfulness and the love that you have shown throughout the generations, going back to the earliest days of your people, uh, seeing them through trials generation after generation after generation and still with us today. Lord, you are faithful and you are good. That is who you are. You are God and we are yours. And we're so grateful for that, for that truth. Help us, Lord, to, uh, to always take this posture of worship so that we see the beauty around us, see your redemptive work in the world around us, and can recognize along with you that the world you created is good and that you are at work in it. Help us to see that beauty, Lord, and to live in, in joyful gratitude uh, for what you are doing here. We love you, Lord. We praise you, and we want to continue to worship you with joy, with exuberance, with shouts of joy and proclamations of who you are. We love you, Lord, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Let's continue to worship.
I rest on 